My name is uh, Dr. Phil Janney, and I'm here at the Department of Geological Sciences at the University of Cape Town here in, uh, in Rondebosch, just, just outside of Cape Town, South Africa. And I study rocks from the Earth's mantle, and I also study magmas that come from the Earth's mantle. These are some of the most deeply derived magmas that erupt on the Earth's surface, including, of course, the famous uh, rock type kimberlite, which is very well known because it's the type that brings um, diamonds to the surface. And I'm actually going to talk to you a little bit today about what kimberlites are and, um, and how they form. Kimberlites produce a volcanic feature called a diatrine. It's much more informally known as a kimberlite pipe. Um, kimberlite pipes are called pipes because they are pipe-like in shape. They're actually, <laughs> they're actually more carrot-shaped in, um, in cross-section. <clears throat> they start out rel relatively narrow and they get wider and wider as they get up to the surface. And so if you look on Google or something at a um, at a kimberlite mine or a diamond mine, you often find that they have this sort of a funnel shape. And that's because they're mining out the kimberlite, which comes up in sort of a funnel or carrot-shaped um, uh, volcanic feature. <clears throat> Kimberlites don't form big volcanoes like we think of with Mount St. Helens or Mount Fuji. Um, they're not that kind of magma. They do erupt explosively, and they do have a lot of what we call pyroclastic rocks. These are rocks that are erupted, volcanic rocks that are erupted into the air and fall back down to earth like those, but the, but the magma is very, very different. And the amount of magma also is, is generally quite small in kimberlite eruptions compared to, say, an eruption at a, um, at a place like Mount St. Helens. And so we tend to get very small um, uh, volcanic features and it forms something called a tough ring, which is basically a, a raised ring of material, mainly the, the material that the, that the kimberlite is excavated on its way to the surface. But it's, it's not very high and it's very easily eroded. And here in southern Africa, virtually all the kimberlites that we find have been eroded by several um, hundreds to even a thousand meters. So we're normally looking, when we look at kimberlites here in southern Africa, we're looking at, at kimberlites that have been eroded down um, to quite a deep level. One other thing that's very special and unusual about kimberlites is that we know that they come up extremely fast from great depths in the mantle. Now, how do we know this? Well, there's a couple lines of evidence that tell us these kimberlites must be coming up very, very fast. Uh, what we find is that these magmas have to rise on the order of 200 kilometers over at most 24 to 48 hours. And what also happens is that we know from um, mantle xenoliths, these are um, types of rock, xenolith means foreign stone, and basically they're either rocks from the crust or the mantle that are brought up in kimberlites to the surface. Many of these xenoliths are quite large. Some of them are, are almost as big as a meter in diameter. And almost all of them are highly rounded. That means that they are they have a very round shape, and this rounding is caused by abrasion. It's the same mechanism that causes um, rocks in a stream to be rounded by flooding action and rocks rubbing up against each other. It's the same process. And so these xenoliths are brought up to the surface, and these xenoliths are actually denser than the magma. So if the magma was moving slowly, these xenoliths would just sink back into the, man sink back into the magma and would never get up to the surface. The fact that these xenoliths get up to the surface means the magma must be going fast enough and, and, and accelerating enough that even with the higher density that these xenoliths were still pushed all the way to the surface.